Yeah, now it is uh, 10 30. We will start our program. Uh, most respected uh, speaker on resource person of our second day online webinar, second day of first session online webinar. Dr. Dr. Guru Dat M. Hegde, sir, uh, and my dear participants, uh, good morning to all of you. I welcome for the, our second day of first uh, uh, first session of our second day online webinar entitled Commercial Production of Biocontrol Agent for Crop Pest, a new opportunities for entrepreneur seeker. So in these aspects, so two people, uh, 20, more than 20 people have registered yesterday. So I would like to welcome them also. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Uh, P. Raja, Associate Professor, Plant Pathology, and Associate Nodal Officer of uh, IDP Nahe Project, and Head Department of uh, Plant Protection, College of Horticulture and Forestry, Pasigat, Arunachal Pradesh. So uh, before going further, so I would like to inform you, sir, Sir, more than 260 participants, including students and some of uh, entrepreneur seekers from Northeastern states, they have registered for this online webinar. So being Northeastern states, we have a diversity in crops as well as uh, ecosystem, different ecosystem. So managing pests and the diseases, it is a challenging one because most of the states are organic uh, farmers and growers. So there is a huge demand for back control uh, agent production on organic, inorganic farming, as well as uh, uh, biopesticide and biocontrol inputs. They are in greater need uh, because um, pests and the diseases are posing major threat to cultivation in major crops. So keeping in this view, we have uh, organized this uh, online webinar, but a funny bit of entrepreneur seekers. So uh, before going further, I would like to read the uh, bio data of our resource person. Uh, Dr. Gruda Tiam Hegde, sir, is working as a professor of uh, plant pathology, Institute of Organic Farming, University of Agricultural Sciences, Darwar, Karnataka. And uh, his working area is uh, biological control, organic methods of uh, disease management, and wheat pathology. He has, award, he has received the award of Sadhana Achiever Award 2019 at national level in the year 2019 and 20. Best, best Senior Scientist Award uh, national level in the year 2019 and 20. BP Single Memorial PI Industries Award from Indian Society of Mycology and Plant Pathology Udaipur in the year 2020 and 21. And Best Outstanding Scientist Award from Kamarajar Institute of Education and Research, Teni Tamil Nadu, India, from national level, and 2021 and 22. He has credit of publication of full length papers, uh, 45, and short notes, uh, 15, and abstracts and conference presentation, 150, and book chapters in the books, uh, 15, and popular article, 35, and bulletins and leaflets and brochures, 20. So, he has handled many projects that projects of funding agencies are NABAR, National Horticultural Mission, and Government of uh, Karnataka, RKBY, Government of India, uh, rupees more than 1.5 crore on various aspects of uh, sustainable management of plant disease and formulation and registration of biocontrol agent. So he has visited uh, Kazakhstan, and Tel Aviv, Israel, Nebraska, USA, Colombo, Sri Lanka, and London, United Kingdom, and Taipei, Republic of uh, China. And uh, he's a member of a board of studies in undergraduate U.S. Darwar, and member board of studies postgraduate U.S. Darwar, and Asian PGPR Society, Hyderabad, Society for Advancement of Human and Nature, Himachal Pradesh, and also National Advisory Committee, Don Bosco College of Agriculture, Goa, Indian Society of Agricultural Information Technology, and life member of National Environmental Society Academy. With this uh, brief uh, 
information about him, the bio data. I'll hand over the platform to uh, Sir uh, Grudet, Sir. Sir, uh, it's the time you can start the session. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajaji, for a very nice introduction. And at that set, I would like to extend my thanks to everyone, Dr. Ajay, Dr. Raja, and all the organizing committee members who organized this beautiful uh, webinar, especially on webinar on this biological control agents, is commercial production and its role in organic farming. And Dr. Raja was mentioning the importance of the state, Arunachal Pradesh, is having a wide diversity of crops, both field crops, horticulture crops, vegetables. Tremendous scope is there in Arunachal Pradesh as well, apart from the other states for more of organic farming and uh, use of these biopesticides. Keeping all these things uh, in mind, I have presentation, I have prepared my presentation uh, so that many of the students and other uh, invitees here may get some benefit out of the experiences that I have through this University of Agriculture Sciences, Darwin. Okay, sir. Uh, good morning to all of you. Now I will start my uh, presentation. Uh, shall I share it, sir, now? Uh, yes, sir. You can start sharing your slide. Yes. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Visible. Okay. Sir, I will start. I have a presentation for about one hour followed by the discussion with the participants for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I request all the delegates and the participants kindly note your uh, uh, doubts so that I can we can have a discussion at the end of the presentation. So welcome once again to this national webinar on uh, commercial production of biocontrol agents for crop pest management organized by College of Horticulture and Forestry, CAU, Bimfal, under the auspicious project IDP and NAHEP. Good morning again. See, this is uh, my topic, presentation topic is here. That is large scale production of uh, biocontrol agents for plant disease management. And uh, as uh, Dr. Raja mentioned that I'm a professor in plant pathology, working in the Institute of Organic Farming, as well as All India Coordinated Research Project on Wheat and Barley. Uh, I have got uh, two responsibilities here. Uh, so let me begin with uh, the course outline. This is an outline of my presentation. That is about, uh, I would like to just mention about Institute of Organic Farming, US Dharwad, a model state of art laboratory and a certified organic farm, a global and national scenario of organic farming, then role of biopesticides and BGPR. Then comes the crux of my presentation that is uh, mass multiplication or commercial production of uh, biological agents, both uh, uh, talk based solid and liquid based formulations, the mechanisms of actions of biopesticides, few case studies with respect to the disease management. And uh, here I have covered almost uh, most of the crops grown in Arunachal Pradesh as well. And then extension activities, some of the commercial formulations and the for by the conclusions. So let me begin with the, our own institute, that is Institute of Organic Farming, which was established during 2006, and it has got a state of laboratories with all the sophisticated instruments for mass production of different kinds of biofertilizers, biopesticides, and even mycoinsecticides. We are mass multiplying 18 different microorganisms in commercial formulations for its uh, uh, farmer for the end user for the production or for the benefit of end users that are the farmers. You can see uh, there are different. This is the first one is our uh, entrance or uh, facelift or entrance building. And inside, we can see such kind of uh, buildings wherein we have different uh, rooms, uh, isolated rooms for different organisms so that we can avoid the contaminations. In one floor, we have got myco insecticides, and in the down floor, we have got. Uh, biopesticides and on the left hand side we have the facilities for microbiology lab as well as for the production of biofertilizers. So in nutshell this is one of the state of art laboratory with all sophisticated instruments. Many stakeholders, students, they come here to get on hands-on experience about production of the biocontrol agents. And as just I was mentioning there, there are so many biofertilizers and biopesticides altogether 
18 biopesticides and uh, uh, biofertilizers are being mass multiplied in our institute and on they're having a huge demand in not only in Karnataka, but also the neighboring states like uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, they do the farmers and uh, many of the organizations, they come and they will purchase it from us. Now, just I quickly, I will go through, you can see the, there is an English word also, since we have also given the Kannada, which is a local language, but below that in bracket, we have got, uh, we have written the English name. This is Trichoderm harjanum, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillomyces lilacinus. Now it is Purpurocilium lilacinus, Pseudomonas fluorescens. These are the different uh, biological, uh, biofungicides, biobactericides, bionematicides we are producing in a large scale. Similarly, mycoinsecticides like Pneumoria rili, Metrizium ansoplia, Lacanicillium lacani, or it is Verticillium lacani earlier, Bavaria bessiana. These are all some of the insecticides, bioinsecticides that are being mass multiplied in our institute. And just quickly, just to, to show you, we can see the, <coughs> sorry, uh, see this coconut black headed caterpillar, that is Metrizium ansoplia that is being overgrown on this caterpillar on spotted pod borer, pigeon pea gall weevil, tick defoliator. You can see the surface is totally occupied by or as growing natural fungus that is metrizing has grown over this fungus and has given a natural control of some of these insect pests, rhinosaurus, beetle root grubs, diamond back moth, root grubs, spinged moth, cotton borewarm. So this metrizium is like a hot cake in our area being grown, very extensive, being produced extensively and has got a very greater demand. And similarly, the pneumoria rely for Spodoptera lutura, helicoverpa, mythemna separata, and many other uh, uh, fung uh, insects. And also the Bavaria bessiana for pamuvil, leaf hopper, they're being, it's being produced and uh, many of the copy estate and tea estate farmers are being uh, they are being purchased here. And uh, the uh, Lacanicillium, Lacani especially for the sucking pests, this is also being commercially produced and being sold to the uh, various stakeholders the, for, for the management of mites, lip offers, thrips, aphids, etc. And then just coming to the usage, because most of the most of them are here, I heard that they are the students, just to refresh their mind. See, Trichoderma harjanum is a well-known biofungicide especially used for managing soil borne diseases of most of the field crops, horticultural crops, vegetables and all those crops. And it is being used as a seed treatment, soil application, seedling, dip, so drenching. Okay. And similarly, the Pseudomonas fluorescence, one of the novel biobactericide being used broadly for management of uh, fungi as well as the bacteria and uh, in, uh, different uh, uh, vegetables and fruit crops. And this is also being used as a spray, as a soil application, as a seedling dip as, to manage various uh, soil seed bone diseases of the crop plants. Bacillus subtilis as well is also upcoming the biobactericide, which is also being used to manage most of the foliar diseases of the crops. And it's, this is also being recommended for as a spray, seedling dip, root dip, seed treatment and various applications along with the uh, organic matter. We should always know that enough organic matter should be there for multiplication of these biopesticides and for viriliferous activity of these biocontrol agents. Similarly, the novel bionematicide, that is Pestilomyces, now it is Purpurocillium lilacinus, is being produced in our institute to manage most of the nematodes, especially the root knot nematodes, which is a broader or wider uh, seen nematode in most of the crops, including the plantations. This is also being used in seed treatment, seedling dip, and various other applications time, time and again, uh, based on the nematode population, we have to, uh, we are advising or advocating this Pestilomyces lilacinus for the management of nematodes. Then comes the pneumoria, metrizium, bavaria, lecanicillium. My colleague from Raichur University, Dr. Hosmani, must have told you about these mycoinsecticides. They are also being widely uh, produced and used in our area for the control of uh, defoliators, cutworms, pod borers, especially the pneumoria rely. And this metrizium is for, especially for the diamond back moth, back moth brown plant hopper, root grubs, mites, termites, Bavaria bestiana for defoliators, pod borers, etc. Lecanicillium lecani for sucking pest. So they, they are being used at a two gram per liter as a spray to manage most of the crop pests. 
just to touch upon the organic farming as uh, dr raja was telling organic farming is a talk of the town and talk of the state talk of the world and even arunachal is also uh, practicing by default the organic farming okay uh, see it's a system which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetic inputs and to the maximum extent feasible rely upon crop rotations crop residues animal manures of form organic waste mineral grade rock additives and biological system of nutrient mobilization and plant protection this is one of the uh, standard uh, quote by usda so that means we are practicing this knowingly or unknowingly but larger scope of, for this biopesticide is there for organ under organic farming systems and organic farming it mainly promotes the principles of health principles of ecology principles of fairness principles of care so that it will take care of entire organic uh, uh, cultivation so principles of health with respect to healthy healthy soil healthy crops healthy livestock health of the people that will be taken care there and ecology means promotion of agriculture biodiversity recycling of the agriculture waste fairness with respect to ecological and social justice and finally the care means precaution productivity food security will be taken care if we practice it thoroughly and for the sustainable production of the agriculture and then it mainly avoids the usage of chemical inputs we all know that organic farming is not using any synthetic fertilizers or pesticides farming using the natural and farm resources on farm resources then following the environmental local farming practices to encourage the rural farmers to go for organic farming and which mainly concentrate on biological diversity and heterogeneity and also takes care of the nutrient through the application of organic manures like vermicompost farmer manure compost uh, neem cake any any animal manure green leaf manures so all those these things will contribute for the enrichment of the soil as well as the biological diversity of the soil and the recent statistics say that around 55% of the farms in india are organic by default as majority of the farmers cannot afford the chemical fertilizers so just coming to the world scenario organic agriculture is followed in 172 countries and organic agriculture land including conversion areas are 47.7 million hectare and the countries with the most organic agriculture land in are for uh, practiced in australia argentina united states as well and in india was also is also competing for to produce and to practice more and more of organic agriculture most of the states are already being converted into organic agriculture but the total area under organic certification is 5.78 million hectares out of which 26% cultivable area with 1.49 million hectares and india produced around 1.85 million metric tons of certified organic products which includes all varieties of fruits i mean fruits food products like sugar cane oil seed cereal millet rice fruits tea medicinal plants dry fruits vegetable etc so this means to say that there is a every day day the scenario changes year by year day by day to convert the already existing conventional land or existing the totally infertile land into a fertile land by adopting these agri agri organic agriculture practices and these are the major products that are produced in india the like tea coffee rice wheat am on the spices pulses fruits vegetables oil seeds other and others like sugar cotton herbal extracts being exported from india as an organic produce just now having apart from having a lot of awareness on the use of organic agriculture still the contribution of biopesticides is only 6.9% as against 18% of herbicides 20% of fungicides and majority of is 60% that is insecticides there are so many reasons for uh, the less use of or less awareness on biopesticides because farmers has to practice it for a longer period of time and it is not a silver bullet effect like a chemical uh, fungicides we cannot get it the yields or the returns overnight he he should have the patience okay and then commercial production scale production timely availability many things matters for the popularization of biopesticides and there where there is a role of extension uh, scientist 
or the extension personnel to popularize this. See, last three years back, it was 3.1% biopesticides. Clearly, it went up to 4%, 5. say something, and now it is 6.9%. That means slowly the awareness on biopesticides is increasing. And we, the universities and the students, and tomorrow you may become entrepreneurs. You should know the skills to popularize by giving quality biological control agents so that farmers should feel that, yes, today or tomorrow we are going to uh, get the good results, even if you sacrifice the yields in the first or second year. That means the tremendous scope is there, the use of these biopesticides. Now, with this bag introduction, in the background, let me start the large scale production techniques of biocontrol agents of our plant disease management. Here I have divided this topic into two. One is the large scale production that is being followed in the University of Agriculture Sciences Darwad in our Institute of Organic Farming. I will just give you uh, one or two examples. One is biofungicides that is trichoderma and one is biobactericide that is pseudomonas fluorescens. More or less the other protocols remain same and then liquid formulations, which is uh, being practiced, uh, which is just we have started the production of liquid formulations of pseudomonas fluorescence. And uh, let us begin with uh, this slide. This is a, a step number one or soil sample. We all know that microbial diversity study, soil is the bank or it is a hub of microbes. If the soil is rich means it has got a good physical properties, good biological properties. Biological in the sense, a lot of uh, uh, microbes are active. So if the soil is very active, it means that a lot of microbes are there. They may be beneficial or they may be harmful to the plants or human beings. But we are interested in the beneficial microflora or microbes of, from the soil through which we isolate the, the desired organisms or the organisms of our interest and through by following this uh, serial dilution technique. And of, of all of the students here, they know that the serial dilution technique, we have to go for one gram of soil sample to nine ml water plank, and then go for serial dilution. At 10 to the power four, five, six, usually fungal population will be more. Six, seven, eight, usually the bacterial population will be more. From that dilution, we have to uh, take, uh, uh, we have to isolate the organisms of our interest. Now, this is so especially for the production of uh, Trichoderma herjanum. You can see in the beginning, a lot of contamination will come. Okay, in the wall, because soil, I told you, there are so much of uh, microbes, whatever kind of uh, uh, precautions you take in the laboratory to minimize these errors, but many times uh, these things are bound to happen. But uh, the students or the entrepreneurs should have the patience to isolate the desired organisms. The green color, which we show here on the next slide or the next photo, is the trapeur culture of Trichoderma herjanum that is being grown on potato dextrose agar. And there are now many now novel uh, uh, Trichoderma species are there Trichoderma hematum, Trichoderma herjanum, viridae, uh, lot many, but most potential are hematum, herjanum, and viridae. They are most light green to dark green, sparse to uh, mild growth in both in the, the broth as well as in the uh, next to agar, agar media. And uh, see, after isolation, after uh, getting the pure culture, then we have to confirm its uh, morphology under the microscope. See the rectangle branching with the fialodes, fialodes spores. And then we have to have a very pure culture of this trichoderma herjanum on potato dextrose broth. Okay, this is a very pure culture of this trichoderma herjanum, which we are mass multiplying in our institute and for the research purpose and for farmers purpose. See, then the next step is uh, we are using here molasses yeast extract medium. Okay, this is a low cost technology we are following because uh, our area is blessed with so many sugar cane industries and uh, we are getting this uh, molasses uh, to some uh, MOU, memorandum of understanding between the uh, sugarcane industries as well as uh, the universities. University is kind enough to give them a technical guidance and well, we'll get this molasses. And molasses is considered to be the one of the best substrate for the faster multiplication of uh, the trichoderma herjanum uh, so that uh, the cost can also be reduced. Like, but otherwise, even PD, potato dextrose broth is also an uh, important uh, uh, media, but little bit uh, it is a costly affair. 
See, after inoculating into the molasses yeast tectectomy again, for about uh, three to four days, we can get the complete growth of this trichoderma arjanum. This is a mother culture. Number one is isolation, then getting a pure culture, and then you have to, every time you have to prepare this mother culture. Mother, this is very, very important. It should be free of any contaminants so that we will get end product with a very good quality. And then we are following in our institute that is a fermentation unit, that is fermentation technology. And you can see there are, it is connected with the mini uh, sterilization unit, compressor, and then agitator. So, and all this connected to a digital board. Many of the, you may might have seen this. This is just a hundred liter capacity. Likewise, you can go for more capacities also, 200, 500, 1000 liter capacities with a little bigger uh, facilities. So this, uh, see, once if uh, uh, the mother culture is ready, then we have to pour it through the funnel. Okay, before that, we have to sterilize this fermentation unit two to three times. One is, you can see here, this is a sterilization unit. We have to pour it so water here, and then through steam, this fermenter will be autoclave, or it is sterilized. And then you, through this funnel, I can still show you the close-up photos. Here, there is a funnel is here. You can just pour the water one again, and you have to go for a sterilization by following all microbiological principles. Then pour the media, that is molasses, yeast, muddy media, or any uh, microbe specific media that is uh, uh, standardized by the lab. That much quantity, we have to pour it in this fermenter and go for sterilization. Then you we have to add the mother culture. Let me show. See, this is a funny, this is a close up view. Through this, we have to add a mother culture, which is prepared in the laboratory a two to three days ago. And then uh, once if it is added, then you have to close the lid with a cotton swab by swabbing with ethyl alcohol, just put a plug it with the cotton. And then every day we are, there is a glass here. You can, we, there is a glass window so that we can see the multiplication of our green color mat of the trichoderma through this window. And every day we have to go with the compressor to give the fresh air and also the agitator. Every day, 20 to 40 minutes, we have to agitate so that the media and the uh, microbes or the uh, organisms will get uh, mixed up very easily. So this will take about one week time. So the preparation of mother culture, it is one week. Here it is one week. And then uh, mixing with the top powder at one is to three ratio, uh, that will take one week. So that means in a normal three weeks time, in a one cycle, we call it as a one cycle, we can produce 300 kilos of trichoderma harjanum by this kind of unit. Now let me go after uh, looking into this fermentation unit and understanding a little bit of uh, principles. See, this is how we have to add the mother culture through this funnel. Okay, and then collection after keeping it for one week in the fermentation unit, uh, through this glass window, we have to ensure that the green color mat is sufficient now. Then we have to harvest it through the tap just for a quality check. So there also we have to go for a quality check to see how many number of spores are there by using this hemocytometer. We are using for fungus, a hemocytometer is an instrument through which uh, when it is uh, 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 seen through the microscope like this. We are having a microscope and this hemocytometer is placed here by putting a drop of uh, uh, that solution, uh, for a solution, and then we have to see uh, the number of colonies in the these grids of the on the hemocytometer. If it is sufficient, okay. See in the beginning uh, in the fresh culture, 20 to 60 spores we find in all the in total number of these squares. Okay, and uh, that is the indication that spores are there and there is no any contamination. And then go, then we will go with the harvesting of the culture and transferring it to the tacum powder. Tacum is a carrier material for solid formulations. We are using tac for formulation. It is um, uh, being uh, used in the ratio of one is to three. One portion of the extract, three portion of this tacum powder. And many times this varies from lab to lab. Even some laboratories they use go for one is to two. One is to 2.5. It all depends on uh, the colonies they observe and the source of this calcium silicate or magnesium silicate that is being used uh, for uh, as a carrier material, so that it will uh, have the viability uh, inside of the trichoderma for a longer period of time. And after mixing and sieving of the culture with the tacum powder, uh, we have to ensure again the quality check. One quality check is soon after. Uh, 
uh, fermentation is over before uh, uh, from the uh, fermentation unit before we go for uh, mixing with the top powder. Second in is before we go for uh, packing. Once again, we have to ensure the quality check and the qualities are being uh, understand or it is being recognized by number of colonies, pure colonies it is produced. Once if the laboratory in charge is satisfied with the, the number of colonies, then he will give a green signal for packing and then label sealing and then labeling. So all these things will be done in our own uh, laboratories in a different rooms. Okay, see this is how the top powder is being mixed and it is being uh, added. It is the quality has been will be checked and minimum two into ten to the power six colony forming unit should be there before we go for packing and the shelf life of this stock based formulation normally we say we can see the colonies up to eight months six to eight months under normal room temperature it is six months under refrigerated condition it is eight months so likewise uh, these are the formulated products and we can will just fresh preparation normally 25 30 up to 50 cages are always available with us if the farmers or the institutes that they demand more, then they have to give us demand at least 10, 15 days in advance so that we can prepare and we can keep ready for them. And the, so this is a, just a flow chart, which I have already told you. This is in a sequence, soil, transferring the serial dilution, getting the pure culture, confirming the morphology, then put it in the molasses, then go for fermentation technology, and then keep it for incubation, go for hemocytometer reading, then mix with talc powder, again go for quality check, then packing, labeling. This is a, uh, the standard protocol of our uh, Institute of Organic Farming and uh, this still holds good. And just for the information of the students here, see these are the different uh, uh, equipments or instruments that are required for the multiplication or for mass production or commercial production of the biocontrol agents. Of course, the cost varies. But uh, on and above 40 to 50 lakhs uh, is required for that. And this is just a cost for producing 10 tons of uh, trichoderma, 10 tons of pseudomonas fluorescence, almost 10 lakhs uh, materials are required, and almost uh, 7.8 to 8 lakhs of material is required to produce 10 tons of that. And again, based on the rate, we have to, uh, cons by considering the uh, our, uh, what is that benefit, we have to fix the price. Since we are, it is a university system, we are not into the profit making uh, system. It is just cost by cost. We are selling trichoderma at 130 rupees per kg, pseudomonas fluorescence for 150 rupees per kg. It's just approaching cost by cost and bacillus subtilis, it is uh, sold at the price of 220 rupees. It just based on the input cost. And Pesilomas is lessness for one ton, it requires 1,57,500. This includes cost of the electricity, cost of the labor, cost of all the inputs, and the pouch, the packing material cost. Everything includes for one ton of this. And now we will we'll slowly move to the next is pseudomonas fluorescence. The procedure is almost same, only the media and the quality assessment varies here. We can see the pure culture of the pseudomonas fluorescence. Uh, fluorescent colonies, a pure culture of this, and this has to be, we all know that pseudomonas is a gram negative, bacteria belong to the, so many things are there, and this is actually the pure culture is here, the pseudomonas, and this is the shape of the pseudomonas, and this is in our laboratory, we are using pseudomonas specific uh, media, uh, just like molasses for trichoderma, we are using specific media for preparation of this mother culture, and this after gram staining, we can see the bacterial cells like this. And again, the same uh, procedure will be followed to ensure the quality and quantity of the pseudomonas fluorescence. And I already mentioned you this, this is a, will be sold at 150 rupees per kg. Same procedure will be followed. But here, number of days taken for multiplication is just 48 to 78 uh, two hours, while it is four to five days for Trichoderma hargianum. So once if the fluorescent colonies are there, we are going to mixing, we are going to and mix it with the dark powder and then saving and uh, proper mixing, again going for a quality check. Then we are going for a spread plate technique to check its uh, uh, quality and for fungus, we are going for hemocytometer. Here we are going with spread plate technique. And then finally, the formulated products are ready for sale or for the use of the farmers. 
So this is how uh, the two different protocols only with respect to this psychoderma. One is a novel biobacter fungicide, and the other one is very novel uh, biobactericide, which are being sold here in our area like a hot cakes for management of various pest and diseases. This is a quick glance of again Pseudomonas fluorescence. I told you the media varies and the preparation almost all same and the quality varies, but the mixing at the rate of one is to three remains same for all the things. So this is about uh, tap based formulations, uh, uh, commercial that uh, production of uh, trichoderma as well as Pseudomonas fluorescence, which are being used as a biocontrol agent for management of various uh, crop diseases. And now we have also uh, just started the preparation of liquid formulation of Pseudomonas fluorescence. Here also, you have to get the uh, culture from the, or the formula, so the one ml of the suspension containing three to 10 to the power, uh, uh, 10 coliform units per ml of log phase culture. It has to be inoculated in sterilized Pseudomonas broth containing different oils and liquid carriers. Because we are, uh, we have started with liquid based formulations. Even we have, we have just started with medias, different uh, uh, like nutrient broth, King's Bee media. There are so many other uh, medias are there which are available as a broth. So there also we are just multiplying the pseudomonas fluorescence as for a preparation of liquid formulation. And we all know that there are so many advantages of using these liquid formulations of bipesticides over the top based formulations. Number one is the longer shelf life. We can keep it for 12 to 16 months. Even some report says that 24 months, the cells are viable in liquid based formulations. Uh, now, not many. Uh, second one is uh, number of cells, cell counts is more. Easy discharge. Yeah, we can even through give this liquid formulation through the drip and other uh, means of irrigations. While in, in tap based formulation, it's a little bit difficult to give it through the drip. So with all those, and there are greater demand for this liquid formulations as well as uh, as well in nowadays. And then for we are also into the formulation for the production of these biocontrol these liquid formulations. Then all these liquid liquid based formulations has to be kept for incubation on a rotary shaker for about 150 RPM at room temperature for 48 hours. Then liquid formulation of pseudomonas fluorescence can be can be produced at 2% and 5%. Then we have to assessment of the colony forming units by serial dilution with plate count method. Since it's a bacteria, we have to go for a plate count method as I was mentioning in the previous slide. And then once uh, uh, the media is standardized or the oil is standardized, the results indicated that you can see three, uh, a canola oil, groundnut oil and the soybean oil, they perform very well with respect to managing the cell counts even up to 60 days, 360 days, almost uh, one year. Yeah, so uh, we can keep it for one year. The slowly the counts of the uh, only farming units of the pseudomonas fluorescence has gradually reduced, but still it is 1.33, 0.6 and 3.33 as against uh, nil in case of other uh, uh, samples, even the TAC powder, you can see the TAC powder can keep the viable counts up to seven to um, uh, 86 months. Yeah, up to six months it can keep. That is the advantage of using this liquid formulations. And uh, we are into that. And this is just a graphical representation indicating the higher uh, cell count of uh, the pseudomonas fluorescence in different oil based formulations. And we can see uh, the different oil-based formulations. Uh, that's a number of cells. Okay, uh, number of cells or colonies that are being observed in different uh, colonies. You can see the maximum is in canola oil as well as groundnut oil and in the soybean oil. In further, it is reduced. That means to say that these oils have got a richer or higher uh, uh, role in uh, enhancing the. A role of uh, production, uh, the maintaining the colony farming units of the pseudomonas fluorescence at 2% uh, suspension. And see, we have this uh, liquid based uh, uh, automatic fermenter. This is exclusively we are using it for the liquid formulations of the uh, biofertilizers as well as the biopesticides. It is complete assemblage. You can find everything, no separate bottling. Everything will be uh, done by the machine itself. And just we have to take care whether the time. The uh, time being given to one step to the another is uh, correct or not. That is where our role is there, or there is a skilled helper will be there to look after this step wise production and automatic fermenter will be taken care. 
this is about uh, the commercial production that is being uh, uh, practiced in the, in the institute of organic farming and see just coming to the mechanisms of actions of these biopesticides that there is a major role uh, in the of biopesticides as both nutrition as well as a plant protection see it solubilize p solubilizer can be used as a p solubilizer zinc solubilizer k solubilizer apart from having the uh, uh, plant protection role as hcn production cytochrome production quorum sensing this is a new technology and induced systemic resistance so the all these things will be operated in the plant system to manage most of the plant diseases and this is again another uh, uh, the mechanism of slide showing the mechanism of uh, these biopesticides which are being used as a pgpr they are being used as a induced systemic resistant molecule they produce volatiles they produce ht hcn production so that it becomes uh, 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 what is that um, harmful to the pathogens even antibiotics this trichoderma trichotermine viridine pyrolonutrin is produced by pseudomonas fluorescens parasitism that means these uh, trichoderma pseudomonas bacillus they will grow on the other organisms even so pseudomonas fluorescens and uh, this bacillus have uh, role of cytochrome production so these are the different uh, mechanisms of action that we usually uh, come across to justify the role of biopesticides as one of the novel biopesticides this is again uh, another uh, this one uh, mechanism to show that it is a phytostimulant also and most of the endophytes are being also used nowadays apart from these biological control agents and then they produces lot of uh, bioactive novel compounds bioremediation biodegradation many of them are produce enzyme production pigment production enzyme in the sense they produce pr proteins pathogenesis related proteins after induction with biochemical agents like chitinase beta 13 gluconase phenyl ammonia lyase enzymes all these will things will be activated in the plant system and the plant will be immunized to fight against the crop diseases that is the more important most important advantages of uh, using these uh, biopesticides apart from having uh, the growth promotion activities they are eco friendly too and because of the disease suppression the yields of the crops it may be vegetables flower crops anything will be more qualitative in nature so as i already mentioned this they have a greater role in root colonization like parasitism isr and secondary metabolites they can be used as a seed treatment they will be used as a substrate treatment that can be used with any media and we can even go for drenching foliar spray the beauty of this using of biopesticides is timely application at a right time at a right dosage that is very very important precautions we have to take while using these biopesticides and the, the biopesticides also can be used as a precaution once if the disease or pest outbreak is there then any amount of this biological control agent will not be that satisfactory therefore farmers are more inclined towards the chemical pesticides so now let us have some case studies wherever this uh, this our own university my own our own students have done this work especially groundnut uh, is a major important oil seed and pulse crop i think in arunachal also this crop is being grown and this is being affected by or uh, infected by many diseases especially the fungal diseases like early leaf spot late leaf spot and rust so for all these major diseases have been managed successfully uh, very successfully by the use of this trichoderma pseudomonas bacillus and in combination trichoderma pseudomonas bacillus you can see the highlighted one the green color and the light brown color and you just compare it to the t12 that is which is a uh, untreated control a most 40% disease pressure is there early leaf spot and we can see the 50% uh, reduction about 25% 25% 31% when using this bio control agents again and no doubt the pulses are more responsive crop for organic agriculture as well as for the bio pesticides through which we have to promote such kind of uh, programs and you can see for the late late, late leaf spot also being effectively managed by all these biological control agents almost this is pressure was 60% and we can see the 43 42 39% in combination this is the uh, very very interesting results by using this by organic uh, uh bio pesticides and then the field evaluation also been this is just a graphical representation of what i have told just now and then comes the enzyme estimation was also uh, studied here in groundnut you can see the plant height i'm sorry 
the different kinds of enzymes are being uh, justified that is uh, peroxidase superoxide dismutase pal enzyme activity was also more in the leaf samples that means to say that isr principle has worked here so just i was mentioning in the mechanism of action there are a lot of uh, mechanisms that will uh, through these biopesticides which will enhance the uh, different enzymatic activity and give resistance to the plant which is justified here and no, no doubt uh, as far as the diseases if the disease is suppressed especially the fungal disease no doubt the plant height root length number of nodules everything will be increased and uh, the farmers will be getting more yield ultimately the benefit cost ratio is also very much important when it goes to the end user we have to be very careful uh, to check the yield and uh, bc ratio and uh, for pulses no doubt it will be having a lot of uh, scope to use these biopesticides and not only the yield parameters were increased but also the natural enemies this is very much important here there are so many yesterday my colleague from raichur was mentioning there are so many predators uh, in the ecosystem and uh, their role is very much important to manage uh, naturally the pests of uh, most of the crops and those uh, predator population will be increased if you practice these biopesticides if uh, under organic agriculture system and one more my student aditi dobal she worked on wheat pathology she has used this liquid formulation of uh, pseudomonas fluorescens uh, for the management of uh, uh, foot rot disease of um, uh, this uh, disease uh, i mean not foot rot it is a spot blotch disease of wheat which is caused by bipolaris and she has used different oil based formulation to check its efficacy against untreated control along with the the chemical check that is c1 no doubt chemical will be always superior than the biopesticides but can the continuous and uh, timely usage of these biopesticides will be an alternative solution to manage the diseases of any crop pests and you can see the uh, the t10 is untreated control and when t1 to t7 they are liquid based formulation t8 is again a top based formulation t9 is uh, seed treatment with vitavax that is chemical we have to since it is a seed borne disease we have went for a seed treatment as well as a further a secondary spread by spolia we can see the effect of this liquid formulations versus the untreated control uh, they are all on par with each other indicating the scope of uh, use of these liquid formulations in various other crops to manage the disease very successfully this is just a, a numerical indication to show that t6 t9 yeah and t7 you can see the uh, height is also increased and ultimately the yield quintal per is is also almost on par with the chemical chuck it's not on par but the next best 13 and it is 11 it is next best to the chemical chuck so by pesticides have their own limitations as well as uh, the significance in the organic agriculture and here the disease severity yield and bc ratio is also calculated while using this different oil based formulations we can see it is 1.1 is to 3 4 1 is to 2 2 1 as against 1.61 in the chemical check chemicals as i mentioned they are there but again we should have the alternate options uh, because uh, now it is going to be an organic era and every state has got its own policies to implement the organic policies when we should have the alternate the we have should give the bunch of options to the farmers how best we can manage the disease organically by using this biopesticides this is a graphical representation and just to quickly run through uh, we have some experience of using this biopesticides in vegetables in arunachal i know this cucumber and tomato brinjal are also there and, and especially under organic protected cultivation uh, or the biopesticides have got a very major role and we know that better quality higher productivity off season cultivation so these are the many reasons why people are shifting to my protected cultivation and i'm sure in arunachal terrace gardening most of the lands are very stoppy in nature uh, they do not have a larger scope for larger area for large scale multiplication of any crops so i think the protected cultivation is also uh, can be practiced and i think they are practicing now wider row scope is there to Uh, use these biopesticides especially for the vegetables we have got experience with uh, the tomatoes as well as the cucumber you know this tomato is uh, affected by many fungal diseases viral diseases uh, nematode problem so we have to have a patience and we have to have a clear picture what is to which organism we are targeting 
Yeah, so these are the different uh, symptoms of different diseases of uh, uh, tomato, even on the twigs. And uh, thorough land preparation is very much important. And uh, nursery raising is another important step when we go for a poly house or a protected cultivation. The soil should be enriched with the uh, soil based, uh, soil test based uh, nutrients. It may be organic or inorganic. Since ours is organic certified land, we have used all the organic uh, materials mentioned here, FIM, vermicompost, neem cake, rock phosphate, and the liquid nutrition through panchagavya, vermi wash, and our own biofertilizers and biopesticides, myco insecticides to manage uh, various insect pests. And this is how uh, the initial stage of the crop, and we can see the sticky traps here and there to manage insect pests, to monitor the insect pests, and this is a subsequent growth. And we should also take care of integrated approach by taking all the intercrops like marigold, which is a, a attractive crop, uh, which attracts the insects as well as uh, it's having, it's a root exudates having anti-nematode properties. So we should have a very systemic approach uh, while we go for any kind of uh, crops in the polyhouse conditions. And these are the treatments. We have used seed treatment with trichoderma marginum followed by spray, seed treatment with bacillus, followed by spray, seed treatment with pseudomonas, followed by spray. Likewise, we have went three to four times, and you can see T2, T3, wherever we have used seed treatment with bacillus, followed by spray with bacillus, pseudomonas fluorescence, they have given very good management of the disease, early blight, powder mild, and septoral spot, which is reflected in the yields as compared to the T8 untreated control form. Yeah, this uh, shows that there is a very greater role of using these biopesticides under a protected cultivation. And even ultimately the net returns and the BC ratio is also very, very, very important as far as the uh, advising the technology to the farming communities. You can see the highest net return of the pseudomonas and bacillus is six lakh and six lakh against three lakh in the untreated control, which is reflected in the benefit ratio. So, uh, of course, plant parameters also will, will be increased. And here we should keep remember that uh, a parthenocarpic uh, indeterminate varieties should be used under protected cultivation. And uh, instead of giving uh, just like a top dressing will be given uh, in the natural conditions in the inorganic system, here we have to give a top dressing with either neem cake or vermi compost at monthly interval and then spray with panchagavyas and uh, other uh, liquid manures so that go green technology will be there. The plants keeps uh, increasing in height, flowering will be continuous so that you will get more number of pickings. Uh, you can see the 12 and 13 pickings in 2, 2 and 3, 3 as against 9 in the untreated control. And this is the quality and at the end of the uh, harvest, no doubt, uh, the size of the fruits will be reduced uh, if you go for 13 pickings, but still hopes are there that you can manage it. Uh, by uh, different activities. You can see the pseudomonas spread plots, the green color still retain number of fruits and also the uh, color of the fruits as against the sulfur, which is recommended in organic agriculture. This is against uh, untreated control and uh, this is a very superior quality organically grown tomatoes by using all these biopesticides. So many of the honorable uh, vice chancellors and uh, then DGZ they visited. So many of the visitors also, they visited just to make a policy decisions uh, at the state or at the different levels. And uh, one of my other students, she worked even with the IT case, indigenous technology, and uh, by using these botanicals, the like garlic, pseudomonas fluorescence, biopesticide is there, cow urine is also there and whatever. So this combination has worked very well to effectively manage the different diseases of polyartis of tomato again. So that means along with the biopesticides in the organic agriculture, we can even promote the, uh, uh, what is that, uh, uh, plant uh, botanicals, uh, even the chili garlic extract. There are so many things are uh, being used and being popularized nowadays, uh, along with the ITK indigenous technology knowledge can also be promoted as a component of integrated disease management. This is just a graphical representation showing T7, that is garlic, pseudomonas, and covering vegetable sulfur, they have this combination has given a significant uh, lesser yields. You can see the superior uh, treatment as well as the very inferior that is untreated control. Okay, this uh, has really drawn the attention of many of the stakeholders as well as the farmers. And uh, no, no, no doubt, once the disease is reduced, other uh, plant parameters will automatically be increased or improved. Number of 
fruits per cluster number of pickings will also be increased and uh, yield we see the issue no doubt because if the once the yield is superior significantly superior definitely the economics will be superior then coming to the next one is the cucumber which is also being affected by uh, powdery mildew and downy mildews which is i have seen that uh, cucumber is also one of the major crops in arunachal pradesh and you can see the powdery mildew this is a downy mildew okay this this is can also be very effectively managed by the pseudomonas bacillus and the combination of bacillus and septillis and pseudomonas floresiens you can see the highlighted one the red one it is a consortia uh, it's not a direct product but we have added 5 g each of the pseudomonas and bacillus septillis so that a uh, total volume will be 10 g per liter and we can see the uh, difference in the disease pressure as well as the yield as well as the yield yield so no doubt when it is compared to the untreated control there is a significant achievement is there with respect to reduction in the disease as well as the increase in the yield as followed by the trichoderma at 5 g and 10 g so all these uh, case studies under natural conditions and protected cultivations uh, signifies uh, the importance of biopesticides only thing awareness needs to be again created even the cost economics we ultimately it is very very important when it goes to the end user this is a, a spread a polyhouse plot where pseudomonas and bacillus has been used and uh, the fruit, fruits and the difference between the pseudomonas and bacillus spread as well as the untreated control in the polyhouse system this is a clear indication that disease has reduced and uh, it is adversely affected wherever it is not being used this is a uh, just a front view uh, so you can see the front view that is bacillus and pseudomonas on the other side it is individual even likewise we have got uh, so many other uh, crops ginger uh, the rhizome rot is a problem where we are using it even for black pepper one of the plantation crops it is called as a spice king of spices phytophthora is a major problem there also we have went for trichoderma harjianum and uh, see neem enriched trichoderma we have, we have used and then weigh down it with the plastic so that phytophthora never enters if you create situation like this there is no scope for to any phytophthora aromycetes fungus to enter so that the if the disease is managed by using all these biological control agents and organic manure no doubt the plant will be survived and it will be healthy and it will be uh, earning lot in further days so you can see the t3 that is a modified practice we can see the highest yield of the berries of this black pepper and this is just a comparison between local method and the nodi method i just added different crops uh, so that the you can just think uh, holistically the principles behind these biopesticides they may be there or i do not know but they are the crops of our india wherever this uh, plantation likewise another one is cocoa it is being grown in most of the southern states kerala andhra pradesh tamil nadu karnataka it is being grown as a multi storied cropping system and uh, phytophthora pthm are the major culprits major pathogens of this uh, uh, plantation area wherever we have used uh, the pseudomonas floresiens alone or in combination with metalaxyl the pseudomonas has performed very well in managing the water disc of cocoa okay it is a phytophthora species it was a major problem and still it is a major problem but we have to give the options to the farming community to use and to encourage different kinds of biopesticides along with the integrated approach we have to suggest for more clarity on the quality quality of the food produce again every time you have to check it with the after 2 to 3 years of result we have to check it with the net returns how much net returns will be there with the farmers and what is the benefit out of that that is more convincing to the farmers and you can see this is a cocoa pot so the best one is there uh, metalaxyl plus pseudomonas fluorescens that is one of the best combinations and of course in cashew is also another major problem that is affected by many pest and diseases and we have here adaptive model which uh, consists of soil application of fym enriched trichoderma plus metrizium and soplea then spray with boron hexaconazole lambda xylothrin stem application of cold tar nsk neem seed kernel extract use of multi clay potassium fluorescence as a spray sorry pseudomonas fluorescence as a spray so this is a combination this is adaptive model means we have compared the different modules to manage various insect pests and diseases of cashew because we had one nabard funded project 
in that we have made some modules like biointensive means only biological control agents chemical means only chemicals adaptive means it is integrated nutrient models only supplying the nutrients to manage pests and diseases so this adaptive module has given a very good management as far as the dieback list spot disease is concerned and also the uh, cashew stem and root borer and tea mosquito bug of the cashew is concerned this adaptive model in various places wherever we have tried it has given a very good result and also the pineapple heart rot is another problem there also we have used soil application of enriched soil uh, application of neem enriched trichoderma then followed by other sprays and all where see this uh, soil application of neem enriched trichoderma was common to all the treatments so that the soil borne disease uh, will be suppressed in the beginning itself and the further many of the cultural practice will again enhance the disease that has to be certainly we have to take care of with other chemical fungicides and nowadays this technology is not only in the fields but also in the terrace gardenings most of the farmers they grow vegetables on their terraces by using all these organic agriculture practices mainly to get a fresh veg fresh veggies it's a physical exercise to them time can utilization emotional bonding traditional knowledge they will get a nutritious uh, uh, colored fruits and it's an enterprise chances are there and just few another few slides are there just to show this paddy blast which is one of the major crops in arunachal pradesh is a, a paddy there also there are two diseases blast and sheath blight we have got the seedling dip treatment along with pseudomonas fluorescens you can see we have seed treatment with pseudomonas fluorescens seedling dip and then spray with pseudomonas fluorescens exclusively under organic practices farmers will practice this or else at least he can go with one spray of pseudomonas fluorescens and next one with the any chemical fungicides recommended for paddy blast and sheath blight management so we have got a seed treatment with bacillus subtilis even bacillomyces lilacinus is also advised to manage the uh, nematode problem even in the maize just i was seeing maize also being grown there and then i picked up this slide so that downy mildew black rot rust can also be effectively managed with the bacillus subtilis pseudomonas fluorescens both as a seed treatment as well as a spray wheat is another major important cereal crops foot rot and spot blotch can be managed with this and even the groundnut can be very effectively managed especially for the soil borne diseases and also uh, if you take a timely application of this even the foliar disease can be very effectively managed this is not only for the field crops but also for potato we have a, a very a nice extension system almost all universities will be having the extension systems only the extension functionaries has to take this technology to the doorsteps of the farmers and we have to give a very clear demonstration to them how to treat it and how to manage it how to identify the disease then only the any technology will have its own uh, uh, expansion uh, if the farmer is really convinced okay only thing he thinks about the yield that also we have to convince him in the beginning and even for sugarcane set treatment to manage many of the soil borne diseases not only for the commercial crops even for chili and many of the fruit crops like banana we have a bacillomyces i told you one of the best uh, nematicides that are being produced and being sold is a bacillomyces lilacinus this along with other uh, itks we can use this technology to manage uh, most of the fruit diseases of fruit crops and the vegetables okay you can see this uh, neem cake application this is a uh, radophilus affected uh, banana plantation so we have to have a, a management strategies neem enriched bacillomyces can also be used arecanut is another uh, important plantation crops here also we have used the pseudomonas fluorescens to manage uh, the leaf spot of uh, uh, arecanut or betel nut mm -hmm. and then the last one is ceratosis fimbriata another important uh, major problem of pomegranate one of the major important fruit crops okay i think all horticulture students you know the importance of the, this fruit crop and uh, since last one decade this is being affected by many diseases bacterial blight pomegranate wilt colletotrichum so we have our one of my colleagues from raichur university have uh, worked very basic work and then it is scaled up now managed to manage this uh, ceratosis fimbriata by using various uh, strains of pseudomonas fluorescens you can see the efficacy of this pseudomonas fluorescens against uh, ceratosis fimbriata various strains they have been given very good results and even the trichoderma strains they were found very very important especially the trichoderma hargeanum to effectively manage this uh, uh, ceratosis fimbriata 
both under uh, this is under wind vitro conditions and even sclerotium rhabdoi can be effectively managed by the pseudomonas fluorescence isolates again i work from raichur university bacillus subtilis different strains okay basically the work will be conducted by the students masters and phd's further will be scaled up by the institute for its commercial production okay there so this is an indication to show that all the microbes they have got a very important role in successfully managing the diseases provided if they have been used in advance with proper care a cultural care has to be taken while treating the soils and managing the crop and uh, the last there are so many commercial formulations are available in india and abroad so many companies are coming forward now uh, and already they are there in the market okay only thing the farmer's knowledge has to be enriched by proper convincing giving him a proper guidance so that he can make get it available or he can practice it in uh, his own farm or in, the, in his own gardens you can say trichoderma is there by number of companies number of uh, universities and many fungicides like streptomyces pseudomonas many other uh, fungicides across the globe across the india are being in the forefront of the private companies they are also using this and they are giving a, a testing molecule to the universities to check the efficacy of this uh, various biological fungicides okay and the, finally uh, i would like to conclude my this presentation by uh, these few points that is uh, greater challenges yeah for use of biopesticide crop for disease management is always there production protocols and economics vary from lab to lab shelf life is very very important role while using the biopesticides and biopesticides they can be a novel component under organic agriculture no doubt in that biopesticides can be a component in integrated disease management too and large scale multiplication timely availability is the concern of the day but uh, many entrepreneurs are seeking opportunity to for startups okay many people are coming to take up this as entrepreneur program no doubt if everybody things in the positive direction this concern will also be uh, minimized or can be uh, enhanced further for large scale multiplication and awareness through extension programs are very very essential technology should not be only to the lab it should go to lab to land then only every technology will have its own uh, uh, significance so i may, i told you the challenges are always there for anything so finally our uh, the uh, late uh, president of india sri abdul kalam ji he said if you fail never give up because fail means first attempt in learning end is not the end in fact e n d end means effort never dies if you get no as an answer remember no means next opportunity so let's be positive while taking up any kind of entrepreneurship skills failures are always there but you have to understand the quotes given by many of such personalities to for a successful uh, entrepreneur and that's all thank you for your kind attention thank you very much thank you sir so thank you for your uh, for the nice presentation so now the topic is open for a discussion the participants can interact with the dr gurudev thegade sir sir in the chat box we got some questions so let me read out, read out those okay yes sir yeah shall i read it yes sir sir okay sir hey, what i am saying is what is the effective dosage of biopesticide per hectare is that is the first one no no ah no, sir no. Uh, le, uh, let me let me read out sir please yeah yeah, yeah. ah sir here uh, rudrappa uh, sir is asking Uh, biocontrol agents isolated from Karnataka locality, so can able to work uh, at different localities all over India with the same efficacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It is not. It is not with the same efficiency because we always say native isolates are more preferred than the uh, isolates from the other states. Okay. I think that is enough. The answer is very clear. It is not. Yes, sir. Not, it doesn't give the same efficiency in other states. Okay. Let's move to the next. And uh, second question from the same person. so which is the specific media used for pseudomonas fluorescence multiplication uh, in your institute specific is media pf media pseudomonas specific media itself is available and the next one okay. is pf media we are using these two for a commercial production 
pseudomonas specific media as well as king's media uh, sir uh, one more question from the roshani rana uh, she is asking for how to check the quality of talk to be used as a carrier material yeah we have got there are so many sources of uh, talk which is a calcium based uh, carrier material so it is all uh, natural silica based magnesium based is there only we have to check the calcium content in that and the fineness of the powder okay if the uh, see if it is uh, too much of crystal in nature we are avoiding it it should be very fine in nature and the calcium content should be 19 to 20% if that much is calcium content is there it increases the viability of the uh, the spores uh, when it is kept under storage conditions okay sir okay so sir next question sir from the uh, uh, participant uh, rajeshwari so she is asking for so instead of uh, uh, high cost laboratory facilities so can we produce these biocontrol agents at farm level so she is asking for farm level production techniques sir yeah no doubt see mother culture and pure culture we have to get it from the universities okay that is there is no there is no compromise for that but for the farm level uh, production no doubt this she can use or they the farmer or we they can use uh, at 1 2 is to 100 that means two part of the biocontrol agents in 100 kilos of organic matter they can keep it for 15 days and they can multiply and they can use it for the farm not only any trichoderma but even pseudomonas pseudomyces they can be used in 1 1 to 2 kg per 100 kg got my point is yes, one, one to two that is called is one is to 100 or two is to 100 at this proportion if you mix it and keep it keep it keep it kept it for incubation by keeping a polythene or uh, something or the mulch over that uh, organic matter it can be multiplied and it can be used for larger areas okay sir Uh, sir next question from the roshini rana madam so she is asking for to check the colony farming unit so which which method do we use whether the spread or power plate method it is a power plate method okay, okay power plate method for the bacteria and for hemocytometer for the fungus okay sir uh, what is the sir, next the next 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 question from the dr l ranjit kumar sir uh, sir is asking for efficacy of uh, bio, bio agents in high tropical and high altitude conditions what is the efficacy sir uh, is, the, is, is, is it there in the question box chat box i am just ah, yes sir yes sir what is the effective dosage of bio pesticides per hectare rudrappa ha ah, yes sir i think it is skipped yeah let me answer those things i have another 6 okay. 7 minutes time no problem effective dosage yes, of bio pesticides per hectare it varies from soil to soil crop to crop okay, okay. normally a blanket recommendation per hectare is 5 to 6 kg along with the completely decomposed organic matter that's okay hmm? then it's okay. really a wonderful presentation okay most useful session and information am i going a uh, serial serial isn't it Ah yes sir yes sir. Pesticide effective for white grub, which gives best result. White grubs, it is I just told you, metrizium and soplia. Yeah, uh, metrizium yes, it's a myco insecticide, a fungus that grows on the insect. Uh, it's uh, being performing very well for any kind of root grubs and even to the mites. Is there any successful microbial pesticide recommended against pinworm in tomato? Uh, i'm not very sure for this but bevery of course i heard beveria bisiana yeah it is uh, but i'm not very sure i do not know the successful results uh, against pin worm in tomato but beveria bisiana definitely has a scope to use it uh, and for this tomato crop which bio fungicide used for rice false mud uh, it is uh, pseudomonas as well as trichoderma okay at 10 g per liter of water for false mud management we can go with trichoderma hargeanum and pseudomonas fluorescens at 10 g per liter for effective management of false mud but before you spray you have to cut it cut the false mud that uh, infected uh, tillers we have to uh, we have to just cut it by keeping keeping the inoculum in the field we just uh, cannot spray because it doesn't give the uh, result as expected we have to just uh, just for the viruses we always say just you uproot the likewise you have to Uh, take out the infected uh, tillers and then go for spray 
Okay, then thanks, uh, Gurudar. Then good morning. Entoma pathogens requires a host. It may be pest or insect, whether it is affecting the natural enemies or any kind of such works are going on in your... What is this? One second, I'll read. Uh, host, good morning. Entoma pathogenic requires a host. It may be pest or insect. Ah, okay. Whether it is affecting the natural enemies or any kind of such works are... Yes, yes, the works are going on. They do not uh, affect any kind of... Uh, uh, see, they are beneficial. First of all, those entomal pathogenic, whichever I have mentioned, it may be verticillium, metrizium, nomoria, bavaria, they're all uh, uh, natural pest, I mean, natural beneficial organisms which grow naturally on the crop pest. And when it comes under natural conditions, they do not have any adverse effect on the crops. And successfully, they manage the insects also. It all depends on the pest load. Okay, uh, you can just uh, give me any other questions if you have another two, three minutes, two minutes. Yes, sir. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, uh, actually, I'm working on uh, formulations, uh, trichodoma and the pacillomyces and pokenia clandosporia. If any other uh, compound is there to increase the shelf life of the spores? See, it is all, uh, see, it all depends on the media which you are, you are using. And no doubt you have to use this PVP and glycerol. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Understand. They right, will, sir. Yeah, they will enhance the shelf life again. Right, 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 right. Fine, sir. Fine. Thank you. Please visit. Hello. Your, 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 Hello. Your, yeah, yeah, please. Hello. Yeah. Sir, yeah. can you... Can, can, whenever we are uh, mixing this trichoderma agile pseudomonas, are they are compatible or the, um, some strains are compatible and some strains are so antagonistic? Yeah, they are very strain specific. We should ensure the which kind of strains, but whatever, but in our studies, we have isolated more than 70 to 80 different strains and almost they are compatible with each other. So based on that compatibility studies only, we, will, we are going to mix it in different proportion and we will use it for management. The compatibility study, okay. as you rightly said, is very much important. Okay, no, that is okay, sir. Then another thing, sir, uh, uh, till now, many any companies that uh, they are using uh, liquid formulations developed? Many, many are there. Many companies are there. Many of the societies are there. Institutes are there. They are having this commercial production of uh, liquid formulations. I had given that list and I will send it uh, to the organizer. Okay, okay, that will be fine, sir. Uh, and your uh, your study, sir, shows uh, when you are using canola oil, uh, groundnut oil, and soybean oil, na? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. we are using, but now we are also into the media means uh, media based chemical based uh, formulations. That is uh, using different uh, medias: rose bengal agar, kuster agar, nutrient agar. Uh, okay. many no, no, that is the thing, sir. But. Um, Whenever we are studying the self life study, uh, some are uh, telling that uh, our product will remain um, 15 months, two, two years, even three years. But my question is, you one crop cycle ends maximum within uh, six months. Whatever the money, cereals or pulses we are taking within six months, all the crop is harvested. So uh, if uh, the trichoderma produced formulations uh, remains maximum six months, uh, and freshly we can use what is the harm? Why should you keep it for one year or six months or eight months or 10 months? Is it necessary, sir, for keeping it 12 months or 15 months or two years? Okay, sir, no harm in uh, keeping. Uh, you see, your question is very right. You said when the crop duration itself is uh, four to six months, why they have to take uh, such formulations which are having longer shelf life? So see, so sir, many farmers are continuously going for a different kind of kinds of crop. Every time they cannot come and purchase. See, suppose in the so, so Karib season he has used paddy, and the next season they are going for a pulses, or any vegetables are also being there. A single farmer will not always be having a single crop. He is having a multiple crops. Am I right, sir? So yes, under sir. such situations, he can use it. If it is more, he can use it for other crops. If he is a very friendly man, he can give it to his neighbors so that the programs will continue and the lot of awareness will come to the farmer. There is no uh, wrong in keeping the limited quantity. 
it's just like going to the doctor and uh, taking whatever subscription he says prescription he gives if you require more we can go and buy and again we can come back isn't it that may be understood no sir so you can use those solutions if it is more for the hmm. other vegetables or other far kitchen gardens or his uh, maintenance of other crops then sir another thing man i ask this uh, almost all the biological control agents uh repeated uh, subculturing reduces the efficacy as we know so for maintaining the efficacy uh, the percentage growth inhibition efficacy of the biological control agents man besides this man repeated subculturing any methods are there for maintaining the efficacy more than 85% or 90% of the biological control agents yeah we have to go for a pure mother culture right? every time we have to go for a pure culture we are not using the same old culture which is used to do years to three years ago okay so we are freshly we have to multiply and that pure culture only we have to use it for our commercial production no and that we know mane mane suppose you got the pure culture at once Mm-hmm. then um, again this pure culture you are maintaining in one pot or in the soil or in the crop plant itself in isolated plants no, or in the laboratory you are maintaining we have got our organic blocks okay. understand in okay. organic blocks we are using these cultures for management okay. of various pesticides disease on and off okay. we are repeatedly taking it from the soil and we are making a fresh culture using it for okay, few guy i i i got i got your point that means it is totally under your supervision you are maintaining the culture yes sir mm. yes, yes, yes so so that you are confirming that the mind trichoderma is in this block sometimes you are also yes man this is your trichoderma uh, is acting uh, against different diseases yes 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 molecular signal uh, signaturing you are also making i think yes 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 we are doing it for a part of our post graduate because sir why i am speaking sir sometimes the scientists are telling you are uh, you are applying trichoderma in the soil it is okay but mm-hmm. how can you confirm your trichoderma is giving resistance or disease uh, inducing character there are so many factors in the soil how can you give guarantee your trichoderma is working see i told you soil is a hub of so many microbes there are so many competitions for space and nutrients are going on okay, okay the sir. best way is to confirm your own trichoderma is effective when you apply it at least for 15 days or monthly interval you have to re isolate the soil check the population which uh, particular strain or which particular species is more viable or more in quantity that itself is a ground truth for anybody further as you said scanning electron microscope okay that is a further studies you can prove yes 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 or yes. molecular characterization is there basically we are our products are all dna fingerprinted yeah okay Yeah, that is also very very important to prove the efficacy or to show our own strains are much effective. And I am not claiming that our strains are much effective. There may be there may be many other uh, strains which are competing, <laughs> but more or less the program is to create awareness. Let them use whatever. No, okay, sir. No. Use this, that use is fine. Native isolates. That is very much important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Very fine, sir. Very informative. Very final lecture. Uh, we are also working on Hello, the prediction yes sir um, uh, but i am very happy to hear about your lectures very fine sir please thank do you. visit thank you thank you okay sir hello sir thank one uh, question from my side also sir sir after uh, formulating matlab uh, final formulation is done again we have to check for cfu yes you have to check two times if it is a for a commercial production i told you once after the extraction from the fermenter before hmm. you go for mixing with the, the top powder and the second okay. quality check before you go for a packing because you hmm. should have that concise or you should have that confidence in you that yes i am giving a fresh culture or fresh uh, organism to the farmers understand so yes, these two quality checks are very very essential and that's why many farmers are coming to the universities because we have got a very strong uh, a uh, system of this quality yeah so sir uh, for final for uh, fi- after uh, final product is formed uh, we have to go for cfu for bacteria pore blade method and for fungus hemocytometer but yes. sir telcom will uh, won't hinder in hemocytometer how we will count the spore serial dilution serial you have to go for a serial dilution 
from the 10 okay. to the power minus 6 dilution you have to put it on the hemocytometer okay it, okay it will be a liquid form no you cannot give directly from the tag it has to be diluted at particular okay. concentration hmm? okay sir thank you sir welcome so one more question sir yes sir sir how much percent glycerol we can use it in the liquid formulation sir Two percent, up to five percent, you can use. Two to five percent. Yeah. Sir, for all these parts and rust, rust diseases, we can use the bacillus subtilis for this way. Sorry, bacillus subtilis can be used for rust disease, isn't it? Ah, rust and spots. Spots. Sorry, for pot studies. Spots, spots. Spots. Leaf spot. Leaf spot. Acha acha, leaf spots and rust can be very well managed by bacillus subtilis. No doubt in that. But only thing, soon after the disease appearance, you have to immediately use it at five gram or ten gram per liter, and repeated spray at fifteen days interval. Okay, okay. Hello. So I have one question. Uh, like some companies, they are using uh, this uh, vermiculite as a carrier material to increase the shelf life uh, of bio agents. Either in this line, uh, US Harvard, uh, they are working to increase the shelf life of different bioagents. Apart from this, uh, what what we call like uh, talcoder and uh, uh, other carrier materials. Yeah, yes. And See, that's why I told you, no sir. It depends on company to company, institute to institute. The protocol vary. Perlite, perlite, kaolinite, lignite. Even we are using lignite for bio fertilizers. That is how the cost is very minimum here. Uh, okay, so those are the career so materials. Use your colloid. The shelf life will be up to two years, right? Huh? Yeah. It may be. We have not standardized that vermi colloid. We have used only lignite and also the stack based. There are enough chances. Our scope is there to use those things yes, ultimately yeah. to get more shelf life. Yes, sir. Hello. Fine. Thank you very much. Sir, one minute, sir, please. Yeah. Uh, a fermenter. What is the cost uh, as per the capacity? Fermenter cost now. Capacity of. I mean, what is the cost of fermenter? I mean, uh, normal sizeable fermenter. See, the hundred liter capacity. Uh, two sir. years ago, it was seven point five lakhs. Seven point five lakhs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That entire unit cost. And uh, maybe okay. again, it might have changed after two years. But never less than more or less eight eight point five lakhs you can get it. Uh, sir, kindly give me your telephone number, sir, please. Yeah, please note down, uh, sir. Eight double four. Shall I write here in chat box? Uh, sir, tell me, please. Nine double four eight seven. Nine double four eight seven. Okay, sir. Eight seven nine seven four seven five. Nine double four eight seven. Nine seven four seven five. Okay, sir. Sir, another thing in a marketable uh, formulations product, particularly trichoderma, I mean quality control on basis of quality control. What may be the CFP count we are actually judging? Sir, can you repeat once again? For colony forming unit for marketed products of trichoderma, what should be the colony forming unit? Sir, it is for quality control. Two colony forming units. Minimum CFP, two CFP should okay. be there for fungus at two to. Ten to the power six. Okay, for uh, Sulamanas sir. Ten to the power eight. Two into ten, ten to the power eight. So it must be two CFU. Minimum two should be there. Okay, okay. And for liquid formulation, sir. It's again some up to eight to ten. Okay, sir. For trichoderma, it is eight. Two two into ten to the power six for dark based formulation. Eight into ten to the power six for liquid formulations. Okay, and then so, for sodium also, also it is eight to ten into ten to power eight. Yes 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 yes. yes. Okay, that means you are using ten to power eight dilution factor for sodium also ten to power six for trichoderma. Exactly, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I will I will talk to you, sir, later on, sir. Please, Thank please. you, sir. Yes. Thank you, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Namaste. So, thank you, all dear participants. Um, thank you, Dr. Gurudev Thakade, sir.
to deliver a lecture on the topic large scale production techniques of biocontrol agents for plant disease management so in the first session of second day so that is 26th 10 21 uh 3 days national national webinar from idb and ihp at chf pasigat um sir thank you for your valuable uh, information and the time and the active interaction with the our uh, uh, dear part, uh, participants so thank you uh, thank you very much sir thank you even i will so reciprocate a whole hearted thanks for giving me an opportunity to share my views with all the fellow participants thanks for all the organizers Thank you. See you again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. All the participants, the second session of uh, today, we will start by two thirty p.m. Please uh, come and join it. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Doctor Raja. Hello. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, sir. Um, Doctor Ron Singh speaking from OUT, Associate Professor of Plant Pathology. Ah, oh, okay, sir. So kindly, kindly give the mail ID of Dr. Guru Dutt Hegde, sir. Sure, 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 sure. We will share it. Ha uh ha. -huh. We will share okay. it. Okay. Uh, I will talk you later yeah, on, man. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are giving yes. all these information uh, in the brochure form. We will uh -huh. circulate it uh, maybe uh, today or tomorrow. And uh, sure, we will send it. Yeah. 